all listeners welcome to itihasa a indic history podcast and you're listening to episode 43 of the season vijayanagara and the second full length episode of the year 2021 with this we resume the mini series that charts the back story of the vijayanagara and gajapati conflict the long simmering tension which had ripple effects on not just both these powers but also on the entire south india and deccan for all the loyal listeners who have been eagerly waiting and wondering why the month of march had no episodes released i owe you all a sincere apology as you all know by now itihasa indic history podcast is a hobby of mine and sharing the fascinating chapters of our indic history with people is my passion having said that It's not my job and doesn't put food on my table. So I've been busy tending to some professional commitments on my work front and I had to see them through. This invariably had delayed the script writing and production of the scheduled episodes. Now that's out of the way, let us continue the story from the last episode. In the last episode we had looked at the rise of the dynamic and powerful contemporaries of the 15th century. the devaraya 2 of vijayanagara and kapilendra deva of orissa and we also saw how both of them in their quest for power and territory came almost face to face setting the stage for a showdown to come the failed truce between both of them had ended up consuming the feudal lords and minor kings of the andhra desa provinces that were sandwiched between the mighty vijayanagara and the determined gajapati kingdom I had ended the previous episode by saying how Devaraya the 2 was the last great personality among the kings of Sangama dynasty that ruled Vijayanagara empire. He was an enterprising conqueror and diplomat. But his glorious rule was followed by a period of confusion as several unworthy Sangama descendants came to the throne. who were drunk on luxuries and caring nothing for the strength and stability of the empire this period was especially critical for the vijayanagara kingdom with the bahmanis and the suryavanshi gajapatis who were determined to make inroads into vijayanagara and were eagerly waiting to strike a death blow when it was at the weakest nine out of 10 times when the word vijayanagara is heard nowadays The image and the name of Sri Krishna Devaraya is the one that comes to the mind of most Indians. Even to this day, the great Raya is beloved and respected by millions in South India. His accomplishments and the glorious role which took the empire to its golden age is forever etched in their minds and hearts. There is no Indian emperor after Chhatrapati Shivaji and Maharana Pratap who has been as romanticized and loved as Krishna Devaraya especially among the Vijayanagara rulers Krishna Devaraya towers among all of his predecessors and successors in the minds of modern Indians personally though i think that's unfair and harsh on the many other stellar figures in the line of Vijayanagara rulers without whom Sri Krishna Devaraya wouldn't have had the strong foundation that he used to launch some epic military campaigns across the length and breadth of south india with total success in each and every one of them and if there is one predecessor of krishna devaraya who deserves more praise and recognition than what is given to him today that would be none other than the devaraya the 2 devaraya the 2 was instrumental in not just guiding the empire through the troubled times but also for going on the offensive and expanding the empire's borders the breathing room and the crucial buffer that devaraya the two's reign provided to the empire cannot be understated as it had helped it from being eaten up by its vulture like rivals who were eagerly waiting to carve it up for themselves and it is exactly for this reason that i will be dedicating some time to the underappreciated rule of devaraya the 2 and also as part of the background 
for the Vijayanagara and Gajapati conflict. Before we look at the role of Devaraya the two, we need to first know some background of the events that preceded him. Most importantly, we shall look at the role of Devaraya the one, who is the grandfather of Devaraya the two. The events that transpired during the rule of Devaraya the one had ripple effects for Devaraya the two, who was his grandson. In 1378 CE, at the end of Bukka the two's reign, the Vijayanagara kings had made repeated attempts to recover the Raichur Doa. If listeners remember, this is the same Raichur Doa that we saw in the Battle of Raichur series. that was set almost 140 years later even the war of the 1398 ce during the reign of harihara the 2 had this as an objective although both these attempts failed harihara the 2 in 1401 ce took advantage of the great famine in his rival bahmani kingdom and refused to pay for 4 years the tribute as settled by the treaty of 1399 ce Although enraged at this conduct of the Vijayanagara ruler, the Bahmani Sultan Feroz Shah, aware of the enmity of his neighbors, did not press the Raya then, but waited for a more convenient opportunity to punish him. The disputed succession of Harihara the two, followed by the internal troubles at Vijayanagara, offered Feroz Shah enough to renew the old quarrel. Harihara the two's successor Devaraya the one's personal indiscretion and haughty attitude as per the chronicler Farishta towards the Bahmani sultan brought matters to a head and hostility soon began leading to the 6th Bahmani war that took place in between 1406 to 1407 CE The Bijapuri chronicler Farishta who is infamous for fudging history had supposedly written about the spark for this war the story is really interesting but one should take it with a pinch of salt anyway it so happened that there lived at mudgal a beautiful girl who was the daughter of a poor farmer as per farishta devaraya the one was captivated by her beauty and had desired to make her his wife but on her refusal to the proposal he determined to possess her by force with this object in view he arrived on the banks of tungabhadra with a large army having first given out that he was going on a tour through his territories from this place he dispatched 5000 of his best horses to proceed to mudgal and fetch the girl by force but forewarned of the approach of the cavalry the girl's parents had fled from the place with the rest of the inhabitants the disappointed cavalry returned towards vijayanagara but on their way they looted the bahmani country then they were attacked by the bahmani forces and 2000 of them were killed this trespass into the bahmani territory and plundering of its dominions is what led to the sixth bahmani war as per farishta But as per the renowned South Indian historian K A Nilakantha Shastri in his epic work A History of South India he suspects this story about Devaraya once in fatuation for a poor farmer's daughter is yet another fictional concoction of Farishta It was Farishta's yet another attempt to paint the Hindu ruler as debauched Instead Nilakantha Shastri opines that the sixth Bahmani war was instead an opportunistic jihad by Feroz Shah Bahmani against the Hindu kingdom when it was going through a succession struggle it is also entirely possible that devaraya one himself artificially created the causes for this war in order to regain if possible the lost territories of the rich and fertile raichu doab feroz shah moved out in the beginning of the winter of 1406 ce and arrived near vijayanagara what is now known as hampi with a large force devaraya the one shut himself up inside the fort and defied the sultan according to farishta the bahmani sultan 
invested the fort for 4 months but he failed in the end to capture it meanwhile devara the one was not idle his army often conducted hit and run skirmishes against the enemy and harassed the bahmani troops constantly as a result the bahmani ruler changed his tactics and began ravaging the country south of the hindu capital also he sent some of his army to take the important vijayanagara forts like adoni and bankapura the bankapura fort was taken brutally and the bahmani army enslaved almost 60000 hindu prisoners there under the threat of wholesale massacre of all these hindu prisoners and 200000 of devaraya's hindu subjects in the area the devaraya one was forced to sue for peace which was granted but on very humiliating terms the raya had to pay an insulting penalty of 10 lakh huns five mounds of pearls 50 elephants and 2000 slaves and lastly that devaraya should give his daughter in marriage to ferosha devaraya had no alternative but to agree for the safety of the subjects who were prisoners of war of the bahmani sultan after 40 days of entertainment the marriage was celebrated with great pomp and the sultan departed back to his territories though this marriage was arranged with the objective of securing devaraya's future goodwill discontent soon sprang up in the mind of feroz shah it was as per him a result of lack of proper etiquette on devaraya's part even before the sultan had left vijayanagara hot words were exchanged between the father-in-law and the son-in-law and they parted as dreadful foes a year after the end of sixth bahmani war a new internal trouble presented itself to the devaraya this was a renewal of the old succession dispute and this time it was his brother prince sadasiva it is not possible to say definitively whether there was any war in this connection all this is known as that about the middle of the year 1408 ce sadasiva had succeeded in temporarily capturing the capital city of hampi and proclaimed himself emperor but his rule was short lived as devaraya the one drove him out a month or two after and got himself permanently anointed as the sole emperor the records of farishta tell us that for some years after this war there was comparative peace between the two neighbors and devaraya the one used the opportunity to carry out public welfare projects in 1410 ce he had a dam constructed across the tungabhadra at harihar harihar is today known as the city of harihara in the davanagiri district in karnataka it's situated on the banks of the tungabhadra river and 275 kilometers north of bangalore he also had an 15 km long aqueduct right from the tungabhadra river to the capital hampi which is considered an engineering marvel even till this day this aqueduct led to beautiful gardens orchards groves and rich plantations of lemons oranges and roses around vijayanagara devaraya the one also greatly improved the city raising new walls and towers increasing the city area and building further lines of fortification he is said to have spent most of his large inherited treasure for these mega projects after a decade of peace in the year 1417 ce a war had commenced between sultan feroz shah bahmani and the king of warangal which is in modern day telangana feroz shah laid siege at the fort of pangal modern day mehboob nagar in telangana for almost 2 years which was then under the control of king of warangal but as disease broke out in the bahmani camp the sultan failed to take the fort and was forced to retire with heavy losses devaraya the one at this moment took advantage of this favorable opportunity to avenge himself for the humiliation he had suffered in the previous war so following the sultan he overtook him 
and inflicted a crushing defeat. According to Farishta, treachery in the Bahmani camp was mainly responsible for this reverse. This account of treachery by Farishta can be safely taken with a pinch of salt. As he repeats this pattern of whitewashing the losses of the Bahmani and Bijapuri sultans. As per Farishta, Devarai and his forces massacred most of the Bahmani army on the field. His army had even followed the sultan into his own country with fire and sword, capturing many places, supposedly breaking down mosques and holy places, and slaughtering the people without mercy. This whole account at best is dubious, as was mostly yet another concoction of Farishta to show the Hindu rulers in a bad light, and also to give a reason to continue the holy jihad against the supposed infidels. As per the European chronicler Fernau Nunes, Devarai the one pursued further and captured the Konkan territories of Chaul and Dabol. Hence in utter helplessness, Firoz sought the help of the Sultan of Gujarat. But as that ruler just then ascended the throne, he was unable to send him any help. These setbacks and the humiliation at the hands of Devarai the one had mentally weakened the Sultan. which ultimately led to his faltering health and sudden death by the time the sultan of gujarat had sent a large army to assist him against devaraya when this army of gujarat sultan reached the bahmani sultan's camp it found that feroz shah had died already and his son sultan ahmed shah bahmani had succeeded him ahmed shah obviously wary of this large army sent valuable gifts to the sultan of gujarat and sent back this army and with these back to back victories humiliation and death of his arch rival devaraya the one had finally earned his revenge and along with it a military glory but as per farishta this victory was temporary in nature as the ascension of ahmed shah as sultan at the bahmani capital of gulbarga will soon have changed the tide of the war we shall look at this in the next episode and with this we shall end this episode here and continue the story in the next i sincerely hope the listeners enjoyed the content if you did please hit the subscribe button and leave a rating and a review wherever it is that you're listening a huge thank you for taking the time to listen to the show i hope to see you soon in the next episode Till then this is Narendra Vikram your host and narrator signing off hope you have a great week ahead